All right, with the world tournament being here and we having the us having the rebirths for all of, well for a few of the cards, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the rebirths and we're gonna talk about the teams that they can run on. Um, we're gonna start off with the Super Saiyan T or Goku, the kid Goku from GT. Now, personally, I still don't think he's a good unit, so I'm not gonna be going too in depth with him. But let's go ahead and talk about the card. Uh, the Dokun version is Battle of Epic Proportion Super Saiyan Goku GT. All of the World Tournament Rebirths comes from the World Tournament Master Mark Rebirths that you get from the local rankings. So I believe you have to get like within 100 in order to um, get those medals in order to get these Dokken Awakenings. I think each one's like uh, 7 medals. Let's go ahead and take a look real quick. I'm pretty sure each one's like 7 medals in order to get them Dokken Awakened. Uh, yeah, 7 medals. So go ahead and remember to grind out the tournament so that way you can get those medals for all of these Dokken Awakenings. Some of these guys are worth it, some of them aren't. Personally, I don't think that this card is worth it. Let's talk about them. Leader ability, technique and strength type key plus 2, and attack and defense plus 50%. His super attack is Kamehameha. Causes supreme damage to the enemy. Allies attack plus 25% for one turn. His passive skill, peak condition. Attack and defense plus 9,000 when key is 7 or more. Now, this is really, this right here is really the reason why I don't think he's worth it. First off, for his super attack, supreme damage is good, but all allies attack plus 25% for one turn after he launches his super attack. Well, honestly, guys, just because his passive skill is a flat out attack boost, and if you're running him on a 120 team, he is not really doing that much because, let's see, 9,000 is just over 100% of his base max attack. Um, you know, no dupe system attack. And when you're running a double 120 lead, that's, you know, 7799, so 7800, you know, times 2.4, uh, his attack is only doing, like, you know, attack plus 50% at most, you know what I'm saying? So I don't really find him that viable, and unless you're having him uh, launch a super attack in the first round, a lot everyone else really isn't going to be benefiting from that super attack. And I don't really see him uh, being in the beginning of the turn anyway. Uh, max stats though, HP of 9181, attack of 7799, and defense of 4933, and a 12 key multiplier of 140%. At least they didn't shift him with a 12 key. Uh, I'm just going to talk about a team though real quick. So he does a link on the Super Saiyan 4 Goku team, this is the only team I'm going to talk about with him. So as you see here, we have a couple primary units like the the, the, the GT Trunks, uh, Gohan, the Dokken Awaken version of the Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, and the Super Saiyan 4 Goku. He links with them with four key links apiece with each of them. So that's not horrible. He does share some other links with the Gotenks, the, um, I think the TUR version of the Gotenks, um, the Broly Killers, Goku, and Goten. So oh, overall, he does share good link skills, but that's just what that's to be expected. He has Super Saiyan... Prepare, uh, was it Super Saiyan Prepare for Battle Kamehameha and GT? So obviously he's going to do better. So if you guys are lacking cards, he, he is someone who you're going to want to have on the team just because he does have GT Super Saiyan Prepared for Battle, which is essentially the three main links on this team. Uh, Kamehameha, yes or no, depends on the who who's actually running the attacks. But overall, he's not a bad unit, guys. Uh, just not a good unit that I'm going to recommend to throw onto your team unless you have really no one else to run. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the next one. Now, this is the other card. I believe that those these two came out together. Lone Guardian, Super Saiyan G, Vegeta GT. Um, leader skill, all types of key, plus two, and attack and defense, plus 40%. Um, not a bad leader skill, not great. That, it's just attack and defense, which kind of sucks. If it was an HP and attack, it would be great. Super attack is final flash, causes supreme damage to the enemy, and raises defense by 30% for six turns. That passive skill is actually really well, the passive on a super is actually decent. Um, I know I don't like having that passive skill uh, where it increases a stat, but the fact that it runs for six turns instead of three turns, like the Bandai likes to typically do, um, or Akatsuki likes to do, it's you know it's a little bit better. It makes them a little more viable for those long-winded battles. I mean, that's what six times three is 180 percent. So by 4,800 defense, he's going to be uh, holding his own when he's getting attacked. Uh, his passive skill isn't really that bad either. Uh, indispensable extends. Um, Attack plus 90% when HP is 99% or below. So just hit one of the little pods that damage you when you're before you go into battle or after you get hit once, um, his passive skill is going to go up. It starts at the beginning of the turn though, so if you start the field at 100%, it's not going to go up after you take some damage. There's a little bit of downside about that, but I mean, HP is 99% or below, that's very, very good. Link skills are Golden Warrior, Saiyan Lineage, Royal Lineage, GT, Super Saiyan, Prepare for Battle, and Shattering Limits. So he has a lot of good Link skills. Max stats are HP of 8718, attack of 8058, and defense of 4841. He has 12 key multiplier of 135%. That 5% down kind of stinks, but the fact that he does attack plus 90% up at the beginning is, you know, more than makes up for it. So let's go ahead and talk about the team real quick. So this is the card right here. He has some really good linking buddies. First off, the Extreme Vegeta, five link skills with him, or five links with him he shared. 
Um, not someone that I'm going to say you're going to probably run on the team, but just because he does have it, if you have him and you don't have any other good cards to run with him. Um, I mean, essentially, it's all key links, two, four, six, he shares six key with him and Super Saiyan. Um, again, nothing major, but look, looking at this team just right off the bat, so this Goku over here, he shares four link skills with, right? Um, he, I would actually recommend to be your leader, because that is the, I'm oh, sorry, wrong, wrong, uh, wrong location. That is the Goku that Doken Awakens from the Other World Tournament reward, uh, the Deadly Awakening Super Saiyan Goku. He was from the World Tournament Global 8 mission reward. So, this card's actually a pretty damn decent leader, um, when he Doken Awakens. He Doken Awakens as a leader of technique type, a key, plus 2, HP, and attack, plus 30%. So, not amazing, but if you don't have a tech leader, he can run and serve as a tech leader. That one also shares 6 link skills with another uh, with Super Saiyan 2 Goku. Just throwing it out there. So, all these cards that he links well with, with the 4, four link skills apiece, 4 or more, uh, this entire team can be a team. Unfortunately, there's not really any good... Uh, the cards in this team as of right now i didn't check this vegeta but that had that yeah um there's not a lot of cards here that actually have a passive that support other units but because there's not really hard hitting units on this team you're going to want everyone to hit hard anyway um but overall all these units right here pretty good future gohan he links with so that's something to take into consideration because future gohan has that cool kaioken passive he uh, shares five key links and Super Saiyan. So if you pair these two together, since they both have that um, that increase in attack slash defense, I believe the ultimate Gohan has the increase to his attack for, I think it's with three, let's go take a look. I think it was three turns, but it might be six. Um, leader build super attack, greatly raises attack and causes extreme damage to the enemy. Uh, so never mind, he doesn't do it for a certain amount of time. But re regardless of that, they're pretty good to, to hit off each other's link skills. Um, all of these guys are pretty damn good hard hitters, except for maybe to take into consideration this video. Um, the next one we're going to talk about is the Buffku card, Training and Discovery Super Saiyan Goku. Leader skill is Agility, Technique, and Intelligence Type Key, plus 2, HP, Attack, and Defense, plus 30%. So, he, right off the bat, he is a decent leader. Not amazing leader, but he's a decent leader. Um, if he was a key plus 3, he'd probably be better, but he's still awesome if, you, if you're lacking an Intelligence, a Technique, or an Agility, preferably uh, Intelligence. His super attack is Kamehameha, causes supreme damage to the enemy and raises attack for six turns. Another, um, six turns, I prefer it. Uh, it doesn't say by how, how much he's raising his attack, so it's probably just going to be a small amount, a small buff, but either way, it's a, it's for six turns, and they stack, so that makes it worth it. Passive skill, super power mastery, a technique and intelligence types key plus two, attack and defense plus 25%. So he is a really good support unit. Now, unfortunately, you're going to have to make the decision. Do you have a lot of hard hitting units on the team um, or do you want to support your hard, your current hard hitting units on the team? Chances are he's going to be a support unit for you just because he does intelligence types key plus two attack and defense plus 25%. And for the sake of the video, I'm not going to be doing technique um, uh, support on here. But overall, he can do some decent damage uh, once his super attack starts uh, hitting off more a couple times. Uh, link skills are Z Fighters, Super Saiyan, Saiyan Warrior Race, Golden Warriors, Prepare for Battle, Kamehameha, and Shattering the Limit. Max stats are HP of 10, 293, Attack of 71, 32, and Defense of 52, 11. And he has a 12 key multiplier of 135%. He actually, honestly, I think he was one of the best cards. I got one of the best buffs since he initially came out. He originally kind of sucked, but um, let's go ahead and talk about the team. So overall, uh, as you see here, a lot of the cards he links with are actually kind of grade A team members that you're going to run on your team anyway. So, let's just think, I'm just thinking Super Gogeta in the future for us. Um, but right now, he links well with, first off, the base form Gohan. It's, fun, it's kind of funny as the links diminish as Gohan gets stoked into LR. Um, I just threw LR Gohan on here just because I figured I'd throw him on. So, he shares five link skills with the Super Saiyan 1 Gohan, Golden Warrior, Super Saiyan Warrior Race, Super Saiyan Kamehameha, Prepare for Battle. Then he drops one link, and he goes uh, Golden Warrior, Super Saiyan, Kamehameha, and Prepare for Battle. Then when LR Gohan comes out, he only drops down to Super Saiyan, Kamehameha, and Prepare for Battle. But he becomes very good with his passive when it comes to LR Gohan, because he's increasing LR Gohan's uh, attack more. So, what, you know, ideally, what, on a rotation, on one rotation, you would want the Super Saiyan 1 Gohan paired with the Super with the LR Gohan, and then have a buff coup or another support unit on the, on the off rotation to give them additional attack. Uh, that's just something I wanted to say right there. This Bardock is still really good, unless you're going up against an event where he cannot seal, where there's no sealing allowed. But this Bardock is still really, really good. His attack plus 7,000 kind of sucks, but he plus 3, so he's self-reliant, and he gives himself an attack buff even though it's flat out. We're only facing one enemy, which is majority of the time. So... That, that's something to keep even consideration. That's something really good. You have the Super Saiyan 2 Gohan from the Baba Shop. 
You have the other Super Saiyan teen slash adult Gohan. I think this is like from the Buu Saga. Um, he's really good as well. And you have the OG Gohan, the SSR and the TUR variants of him. Uh, these two are the only two I would say are probably not going to be running viably on a team, on a mono uh, intelligence team that are optimal or that are really good. But uh, he does link with them, so that's something to take into consideration. If you if you want to use him um, as a good uh, linking buddy, the base Gohan and, well, actually both base Gohans are really who he's going to link the most up with. Um, let's go and jump into the next one, and the last one is Absolute Suppression Turles. Leader ability, key plus three, attack and defense was 30%. When defense, when HP is 30% or above, um, not a bad leader skill. There's no attack uh, HP there, so that kind of sucks. But if you're lacking any type of leader whatsoever, if you're just starting the game and you have him and you can get him Doken Awaken, he might be someone you're going to want to consider so you can take on all of your earlier events. Super attack is kill driver, causes supreme damage to the enemy. High chance to stun the enemy, which is really good. Love that stunning. Um, passive skill, advanced combat power, key plus three, attack and defense plus 60% from seven for seven turns from the start of the turn. That's one of the old, old school, I think that started with like the agility, Super Saiyan 3 Goku, turn-based passives. Um, <clears throat> I'm not a huge fan of that, but seven turns. Uh, he is self-reliant, so he's going to be doing some decent damage. As Assuming you can actually kill your opponent with before the seven turn ends, he's going to be really viable. And a lot of the times you are, um, unless it's a very long-winded battle where you're going up against like maybe with some of the new 150 leads that are out on the JP side. Um, that's probably when that's, when that's going to start running out. But as of right now, on the global side, he, that, that passive skill is still viable. Um, Link skills are Destroyer of the Universe, Sand Warrior Race, Prepared for Battle, Thirst for Conquest, Big Bad Bosses, Shattering the Limit, and Nightmare. So guys, he is really good on a mono villains team. He has a lot of the top tier Link skills for villains. Uh, max stats are HP of 90, 89, Attack of 75, 77, and Defense of 52, 58. His 12 key multiplier of 135%. Not amazing, really not a big fan of that, um, but again, whatever, what can you do? Let's go ahead and talk about his team. So on a mono technique team, uh, he doesn't have a lot of good linking buddies. I actually had to jump down to three links, because he didn't share four links with anyone on a mono tech team anyway. So uh, Vegeta, Vegeta, obviously, because, well, not obviously, but the two Vegeta, Saiyan Warrior is prepared for battle, Shattering the Limit, Saiyan Warrior, this one is what, prepared for battle, Super Saiyan, uh, Saiyan Warrior is prepared for battle on Shattering the Limit. Then the same thing goes for this Goku. I think this Goku, same words for yeah, Shattering Limit. Yeah, so the, the, it's the same link skills amongst these four over here. It's uh, Extreme Super Saiyan Vegeta, and then the Super Saiyan God Vegeta. Then you have the super, two Super Saiyan Gokus. And then the other one is going to be the uh, uh, Extreme Piccolo, Demon King Piccolo. There's for Conquest, Shattering Limit, and Nightmare. So he's giving the, them linked together is attack plus 25%. This Piccolo, though, is going to be on rotation for an extreme team for the most part. He's not going to really do too well, and he's not going to really be on a mono tech team unless you're running a mono extreme tech team. Um, I actually had, did another one over here for extreme or a villains team. So actually, overall, you know, this is really good. First off, he links with Rose and Goku Black, right? So with Rose, you're going to you're probably going to have Rose as your leader if you have him. He links with him. He's probably not going to be on off of the rotation block. He's probably going to be on a primary rotation block just because he's self-reliant and he doesn't really give passive support to anyone unless you're just looking for link skills and you don't have any other support unit. But for who, where, who's here, um, he links with the agility Turles, the grade 8 version. So he hits off, I think, like almost I think every single one of his links. Um, if this thing wants to load. Uh, Saiyan Warrior Race, Big Bad Bosses, Thirst for Conquest, Prepare for Battle and Destroy the Universe. So that's what? Um, 25% for Destroyer of the Universe, which is very hard to get off those unique specific uh, 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 links, which is probably honestly going to be uh, uh, maybe a category in the future. They might just do that for the specific uh, link skills for categories. But Destroyer of the Universe and Thirst for Conquest is what? That's 30, 40%. Big Bad Bosses is what, 50, 65%. So just together, 65% for uh, having these two linked together when HP is 80% or below, they're going to be hitting a 65% uh, attack buff on top of a 700 attack increase for the Saiyan Warrior Race. And they give each other a key plus two for prepare for battle. So those two linking together, very viable on a mono extreme team. If you're lacking good characters, these two can be run together. Um, obviously, if, you're ha if you have Rose and Goku Black, you're going to want to run those two together. Uh, your Piccolo and your Korra are actually going to be on rotate or off rotation because both of them actually support 
um, all the different types. <clears throat> so what that means is, or not the types, but all, all, all the cards on here, they're both support units. Let me just put it like that. They both support extreme types with their passive skills. So ideally on a team, you're probably going to, if this is who you have, you're going to run these two together, the two Turlises together, the Goku Black and the Rosé. You're probably going to have your, your other Rosé friend off, rota or, uh, off rotation if he isn't that great. I could see you not doing that just because he's going to hit a hell of a lot harder. Uh, but it depends on if you have him or not. If you don't have him and you have someone else that doesn't do that well, and you're just having a key plus three leader, then you're going to want to throw them off rotation because you're probably going to want to keep your Rosé on the main rotation because he hits really hard. Uh, but overall, this is what I see. He also links with the Bojacks as well. Um, I, I just didn't really talk about it too much because, I mean, I don't really see you running a Bojack unless you really don't have him with Big Bad Boss, Thirst for Conquest, and Shattering the Limit. And I'm pretty sure it's the same thing, yeah. So um, those Bojacks are available for him to link with, but uh, not, not ideally, uh, in my opinion, anyway. But overall, this is really decent, and he actually has his own good team that is centered around him. But uh, thank you guys for joining me here today. Hit that subscribe button if you're new and stay tuned because I'm going to be talking about the two new support units when they come. Uh, well, they're already out, but I'll be talking about the support units probably tomorrow. Thank you. Subscribe if you're new and I'll catch you guys later.